Hey there, it's Cody with a K, back to talk about Bloodborne again. I've got a tripod so I can use both hands. It's fancy. So I talked about the first, and I talked about the second, and the second was extremely impressive on like every level. Um, but apparently it was supposed to be something of a four issue limited series, but it got renewed and it's going to be ongoing with a different creative team. So is it even really the same series? Not really. But anyway, I'm going to look at the third issue here. This came out like, shoot. I got no idea. Uh, two, like two and a half months ago? Two months ago? I don't know. There's got to be a date in here. Uh, eh, whatever. But uh, anyway, in this one, they're just walking through a wasteland that's not in the game. Uh, or at least it's not like explicitly in the game. <clears throat> but, like I mentioned in the first video about this, this kid's not in the game at all, but it's kind of representative of something that's in the game. Pale Blood, and uh, what it seems to be is that this kid is about sight. Like here, he or she, I don't know, they are saying, I can't see. Um, and later on, uh, kid asks, you know, uh, can you, what, I'm worried about the beast. Hunter says there is no beast, and then it's like, oh, the one above us. Hunter looks up, there's nothing up there. And then the page turn reveal, which is always good. Uh, you get the amygdala. Amygdala. Am amygdala. I know how to pronounce it, but pronounced differently in the game. It's not like amygdala is a part of the brain, but amygdala is how a character in the game says this thing's name. So it's these weird Cthulhu things that hang out on the sides of buildings and you can only see them when you have enough of this stuff called insight. So I guess this kid's full of insight and the hunter's not. But uh, that's another good use of a game mechanic. Um, and something you'd only really catch if you played the game. Uh, they're walking, 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 and they encounter this hunter who has the whirly gig saw, which a lot of fans call Mama Maria's Pizza Cutter, which I personally prefer for a name. But uh, Hunter's just sitting there with the Pizza Cutter, and the uh, Bloodstarved Beast shows up, and the Bloodstarved Beast looks great in this issue. It's really cool. Uh, it's got this weird thing where its teeth are like hanging down from its jaw, but I don't care. It looks cool. Um, and the kid, I'm not going to like, I'm, I'm going to stop it right there. But the kid basically reveals that they've got like special powers or they're, you know, they're more than just a kid. I mean, uh, that much is obvious with the fact that they can see the amygdalas when, uh, the others can't. But, I don't know. Not a lot happened in that issue. I remember reading it and being like, is that it? I mean, that's a cool cover. The Blood Star Beast. Which is actually way more than you see in the game because the thing moves around so fast. But then the fourth issue has this, uh, this area called the Hunter's Dream. It's got all these flowers and these weird pillars in the background. It's an area in the game, basically the hub world, and it's called the Hunter's Dream. And within the Hunter's Dream, uh, well, spoilers for a three-year-old game. I mean, if you want to play it, go play it. I mean, you'll need to buy a PS4. Honestly, it's worth it, though. I, if you're into this kind of game, this kind of gameplay, this kind of storytelling. Bloodborne's one of the best. Absolutely one of the best. And, uh, anyway, the spoiler is, you fight the final boss, the true final boss, here, in this area. So I saw this cover, and I was pretty pumped, because it's got the kid on the cover, and the hunters, you know, this isn't just, 
some boring piece of art that anyone could have done. It's about the story. The kid's here. It's the hunter holding the saw cleaver drawn correctly. And, uh, and then you open it up and it's not in the hunter's dream at all. Like, no part of this is in the hunter's dream. It's in the fishing hamlet, which is an area from the game's only downloadable content, which is an excellent piece of game. But, like, if, if you're making this series for, well, presumably it's for people that have played Bloodborne. But if you're making it and you're trying to introduce someone to this world, maybe, I'm, see, now I'm not sure how I feel, but the, the fishing hamlet is one of the last areas a player will encounter, which I'm not concerned about the spoiler aspects, but just like, I don't know, that seems like false advertising, just put it in the fishing hamlet. The fishing hamlet's a good area, too. It's got some cool bosses, some really ridiculous giant shark men that are horrific. But, then gets a letter from Garman, and uh, there's a cool part where there's a bunch of amygdala around, which is a little nitpicky, but there are no amygdala in uh, the fishing hamlet at all. <clears throat> but the uh, kid is guiding the hunter in between the many legs of the amygdala, and I don't want to spoil that because I recommend if you play the game I recommend picking this up but I don't want to spoil about the kid but I will say that the hunter is tempted to kill the kid but then doesn't and you can see right here uh, says no and uh, like slams their saw cleaver into the beach puts the kid in a boat and they sail away and that is the end. You just see this properly drawn <laughs> saw cleaver sticking out of the beach. And it says end question mark. And so if that was supposed to be a four issue limited series, there's a lot they didn't follow up with. I mean, I don't know if they knew that halfway through writing it, but I'll say yeah, Bloodborne will continue Bloodborne the Healing Thirst. But, I don't, it's kind of disappointing because, let's see, the first issue had a bunch of setup with the kid. Uh, the first issue was okay. Like I said, the second issue is pretty amazing for multiple reasons. Go watch the other video if you haven't. But there's a part with Garman toward the end, which I think I didn't want to spoil originally, but whatever, it's been out for months now. And it's got the uh, moon presence, which is the true final boss of the game. And they don't do anything with that. They do nothing with that in these four. Like, did they plan that? If so, that's pretty terrible. I guess they kind of did something with it in the fourth issue where Garman sends him a letter and he's like, oh, I'm done being a hunter. It's like, okay, that's real... I don't know. If you're really into the game, I'd give it a read. I don't know if they release a trade of just these four, though. Typically, trades these days have like six issues. Oh, that seems thick enough for a trade. They're all 20, what is that, 80 pages? That's like a thin trade, but yeah. If you're into the game, I'd give it a read, but I wouldn't necessarily put this on your pull list. It's on mine, because now I'm invested. And now I gotta know if the next one's gonna be good or even better. Honestly, I hope it's better. Uh, well, I hope it's, I hope it's as good or better than the second issue. But I hope it's way better than like the fourth because the fourth was kind of disappointing. Uh, that's all I gotta say for the Bloodborne comic, I guess. If you have any recommendations about other video game comic adaptations because I don't see people talk about them a lot like I know Titan does quite a few <clears throat> excuse me but uh oh, there's an evil within one I don't know if I do that because I don't know anything about the evil within it doesn't look fun this looks like a horror movie or horror game like any other but there's like a bunch of different 
Dark Souls ones. I don't know if I want to subject myself to that because those were not... Well, I don't know if they're all not good, but the ones I've read are really boring and they're not at all like Dark Souls. There's one of Warhammer 40k. I don't know anything about Warhammer 40k, but I know there's a couple God of War ones. And if there's any game series I know quite a good deal about, it's God of War. Especially the new one, which is amazing. I think there's a series about that. But I've talked about the Mario and Zelda adaptations I own. But there's uh, plenty of other video game comics out there to look at. I just, uh... <clears throat> well, if you know any that are good, let me know. But uh, otherwise, that's all I got.